Wales Today, I'm Lucy Owen. The headlines. A man appears in court charged with the murder of his five-year-old stepson, Logan Mwangi, whose body was found in a river in Bridgend. Also in the programme tonight, we're looking at the expected changes to COVID restrictions. Wales could move to alert level zero, including no limits on the number of people who can meet up. So will businesses make big changes straight away? So I don't think it'll be a, a switch that's clicked on and off. It'll be phased through, speaking with our customers, seeing what they're comfortable with. The health minister urges 16 and 17 year olds to have the coronavirus jab. It's hoped vaccinations will start in the next few days. Evan Dobson had a heart attack a few years ago. He's trialing a new app that monitors him via his phone. And it's a sight we haven't seen in months, but soon events like these will be up and running again. Good evening. A 39-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the murder of his five-year-old stepson. The body of Logan Mwangi, also known as Logan Williamson, was found in the River Ogmore in Bridgend on Saturday. John Cole has been remanded in custody. Logan's mother and a 13-year-old boy have also been charged with perverting the course of justice. From Cardiff Magistrates Court, Ben Price reports. Logan Mwangi's body was discovered in the River Ogmore near his home in Sarn on Saturday. This man, his stepfather, John Cole, is charged with murdering the five-year-old child. 39-year-old John Cole from Sarn appeared before magistrates here this morning wearing a grey jumper and grey jogging bottoms. He spoke only to confirm his name, his age and his address. He's charged with the murder of five-year-old Logan Mwangi. He's also been charged with perverting the course of justice and he'll be remanded in custody to appear before Newport Crown Court tomorrow. Logan's mother, 30-year-old Angharad Williamson, pictured here with John Cole, also appeared in court charged with perverting the course of justice. She too spoke only to confirm her name, her age and address. A 13-year-old boy also appeared, charged with perverting the course of justice. Miss Williamson and the teenager will also appear at Newport Crown Court tomorrow. Since the weekend, police officers have been carrying out searches of the area near to where Logan's body was discovered in the river. A nearby property has also been the focus of the police's investigation. Flowers, cards and teddy bears have been left at the scene by neighbours, school friends and people from the wider area. Detective Chief Inspector Mark O'Shea of South Wales Police has described this case as harrowing. He says he wants to thank the people of Sarn for their support and understanding during the course of the investigation. South Wales Police says it also wants to remind people to avoid any speculation that could prejudice the investigation. Ben Price, BBC Wales Today, Cardiff Magistrates Court. Now across Wales, households and businesses are waiting for a final decision on the relaxing of coronavirus restrictions. The Welsh Government is due to confirm whether we're moving to the lowest level of rules, which includes no limits on meeting indoors, although face coverings are expected to stay in certain settings. For some businesses, any changes are likely to be introduced gradually, as Morgan Hammond has been finding out. The Vale Sports Arena in Cardiff is no stranger to hosting big events. This was pre-Covid when it was able to host crowds of up to 2,000 people. During the Euros in June, it was able to put on socially distanced fan zone events for football fans. But it was only able to operate at 20% capacity due to Covid. Peter Griffiths, who co-owns the arena, has been busy preparing his business, including installing extra bars at the venue, should they get the green light to welcome back more of their customers. It would mean the world. It would also mean the world as well, seeing our customers back here. We've got a lot of people that come back time and time again for events. This two-metre rule has destroyed the industry. Um, there's also a shortage of staff now in terms of um, people wanting to work in hospitality and leisure. Um, so I've been really blessed that we have, uh, I have a, a strong family around me and friends that have come in, helped me out during the Euros, for example. Um, but I, I truly believe that if we're going to get out of this, restrictions need to be eased. We need to learn to live with it. 
but the two metre rule is just absolutely, it's just batter the industry. So if the Welsh Government decides to go to alert level zero, what exactly does that mean? Well, the limit on the number of people that can meet indoors will be scrapped. There'll also be no legal requirement to social distance. Instead, businesses will have to carry out their own risk assessments. And nightclubs and other nighttime venues will also be allowed to reopen. But how much will change straight away if the government makes any major changes to social distancing rules? Kazim Ali runs the Waterloo Tea House. He says he'd be surprised if business owners decide to drop social distancing measures straight away. So I don't think it'll be a, a switch that's clicked on and off. It'll be phased through and the feeling is actually speaking with our customers, seeing what they're comfortable with and will respond to that. I asked some of the customers enjoying a cup of this lunchtime how they were feeling. I think most people now enjoy the little bit of space around them. You've got your own privacy as well in the conversation. I like it to be a bit more spread out and not everybody on top. And I will still keep wearing my mask even if what he says on Friday or whatever, we can take them off. You know, there's still a stigma attached to, you know, being around people and, you know, stuff like that, isn't it? And you, if you go into a restaurant, you sit next to somebody in a restaurant, you're thinking, you know, what's, you know it'd be nice for it all just to, to blend back together. After a quiet 18 months, bookings are starting to pick up again for DJ Stacey Olford. She's recently been taking to stage as the resident DJ for the Welsh Fire at the 100 Cricket Competition. But now she's ready to take her music to the clubs again too. It's going to be like the first time I've ever DJed, I think. You know, it's going to be heart in my mouth, feeling weird to be back because it's gone from everything to nothing and then straight back from nothing to everything again. And I think... It's just going to be amazing to see people come together. But obviously we want everyone to just take it slowly, enjoy themselves, but not be silly. And that's a message ministers here will want the whole of Wales to listen to as they prepare to reintroduce freedoms here that haven't been enjoyed since the start of the pandemic. Well, our political editor, Felicity Evans, is here. So is the Welsh Government likely to lift restrictions? That's the big question, isn't it? I'll be honest with you, I'd be very surprised if they don't, simply because all the momentum seems to be going in that direction. We heard from the Chief Medical Officer for Wales, Frank Atherton, on the programme last night, didn't we? And he said uh, that the vaccination programme had broken the link between community transmission and hospital admissions. We know already that rules on self-isolation for double-jabbed people who have come into contact with positive cases is going to be relaxed from Saturday. England has already got rid of virtually all its COVID rules. Scotland has announced that uh, it'll be getting rid of most of its COVID rules from Monday. So in that context, Lucy, it's pretty hard to imagine uh, Welsh government deciding to go against that flow. And, you know, if they do go ahead tomorrow with the relaxation, I think we can expect to continue to hear a message of caution from Mark Drakeford, as we have all along through this lockdown. And, of course, they are still very, very keen for anyone who hasn't yet been vaccinated to go and get their jabs. And we also know now that ministers have said that they are going to follow the UK government um, around the changes to the rules on travel. Yeah, that's right. They're not happy about it, though. This has turned into a bit of a row, actually. So the Welsh government's position on international travel is that they advise people not to do it unless it's essential, because they say there's a danger of bringing variants back with you to Wales. However, they always go along with what the UK government decides on this because they say it's difficult not to, given that so many Welsh travellers use English airports. They've been very late to confirm that they will go along with this later set of changes and that prompted the Welsh Conservatives to accuse them earlier today of baseless contrarianism saying that it was inevitable they would go along with it so they might as well just hurry up and do it and, and not keep people in uncertainty. Now within the last few hours the Health Minister Lynyrd Morgan has confirmed that they are copying uh, UK government uh, but she's criticised what she calls a lack of consultation which she says is unacceptable. Okay, Bliss, thanks very much. And uh, we will bring you the latest on any developments on those COVID restrictions in our late update at 10.30 tonight. And the Welsh Government's briefing will be live here on BBC One Wales at just after 12.30 tomorrow. 
Now, the latest figures from Public Health Wales show there have been three deaths of people with coronavirus recorded in the past 24 hours. There are 681 new cases. Turning to vaccinations, and almost 2,300,000 people have had a first dose, while more than 2,090,000 people have received both jabs. Grants for people on low pay who are told to self-isolate will rise from £500 to £750 this weekend. The money is to support those who can't work from home, as well as carers and parents with children who are isolating. The Welsh Conservatives called it a welcome increase and Plaid Cymru said it was extremely overdue. South Wales Police say they received just over 24,999 calls in July, their highest ever monthly total. They're urging people to only dial the number if it's an emergency to ensure lines are free for those who need immediate help. The Health Minister has told this programme it's her hope that 16 and 17-year-olds in Wales who want a coronavirus jab can receive one by the time the new school term begins in September. But tonight, one union has cautioned that it shouldn't fall to teachers or police to promote the uptake of jabs. Eleanor Rice reports. Up until now, jabs had been offered to all over 18s, over 12s with health conditions that make them vulnerable to coronavirus or live with others who are at high risk. But now the offer will be extended to all of those aged over 16, those like Faye from Carnarvon. I definitely feel good that we are now eligible to receive a jab. Um, I think it's a very positive thing for us to come to the end now of this entire situation that we've been waiting for for the last year and a half. It's just something that we've been waiting and hoping will come soon, as it's been a very hard year. So why now? The Joint Committee on Vaccines and Immunisation, or the JCVI, changed their advice, giving the go-ahead to offer a first dose of Pfizer vaccine to 16 and 17-year-olds. Wales' Health Minister, Lynette Morgan, confirmed the Welsh Government would follow that advice. I asked her why now was the right time. I think under these circumstances, the right thing to do is to listen to the experts. We do have to... to uh, appreciate that there are lots of harms. It's not just about COVID, but there are mental health issues. There are other issues and we need to keep children in school as well. We've got to get the balance right. There is concern, though, from school leaders that it shouldn't be their responsibility to promote vaccine uptake. Vaccination decisions need to be based on medical and scientific evidence. And if the Welsh Government says that that's what they do and that's something, of course, that we would support. We do feel, however, that every parent has a choice to make that decision and we don't feel that schools have a role to play in enforcement or promoting that now choice. The from One ITV thing that is considered the by the JCVI is the benefit Burton and risk and of vaccinating Wilkes. certain groups. Their new advice means they think 16 and 17-year-olds will benefit Hello, from getting a jab and that that the benefit outweighs the potential. Risk. For Olivia and Dad Lee in Porthcawl, that is something they've in weighed Island, up. I feel like once I've got the vaccine, it'll be a lesser percentage of getting effect from the vaccine Night. and actually getting COVID and getting affected from COVID. So I'd fit to get the vaccine. I agree with my daughter for once. We, uh, there are risks, but I think getting the disease is, 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 what else is coming up? It's far worse than the, the day very small come when our wonderful of risks reporter that, that Gary Burgess has decided to retire. The health minister we'll says in an ideal world, Gary the jabs will start at mass vaccination centres in the coming days and that her hope is to be done by the time term starts in September. Eleanor Rice there. You're watching Wales Today, still to come. Not only is Jake Haywood through to the Olympic final in the men's 1500 metres, he's also set a new Welsh record. And it's turned wetter and windier today thanks to a dip in the jet stream and low pressure. But will it get any better over the weekend? Join me later to find out. Heart patients will be monitored at home via an app. It's part of a new pilot scheme and it's hoped problems will be spotted sooner and ease pressure on the NHS. It works by patients inputting their own data on their phones, which can be seen instantly by doctors. Brenton Williams has more. Checking in with his nurse from the comfort of his own garden. A few years ago, retired photographer Evan Dobson from Bala in Gwynedd suffered a heart attack. His regular checkups have been held at several different hospitals, sometimes involving a two hour round trip. Now he doesn't even have to walk to the car. I feel much safer 
uh, now that someone is constantly looking how my health condition is. Not last week, but today. She will, if she's working, she will look at it and uh, she will give me a call if something that she's not happy with. The app was produced by developers Huma and the Kumtav Mordganuk Health Board, which is also trialling it with Betsy Cadwallader. It allows patients like Evan to record vital statistics like weight and blood pressure every day, which are monitored by clinicians. Any issues can be spotted straight away, and the app also allows video conferencing between doctors and patients. The nurse evaluating the data that Evan has just inputted into the app is today based here at Dogethfly Hospital. It's already saved Evan a near 40-mile round trip. He didn't even have to leave his home. It's also helping to ease the burden on the NHS at a time when it really needs it. Covid has put the NHS under a massive spotlight there's huge pressures and waiting lists and, and digital technology can only help to, to ease uh, the transition back into normal healthcare. Imagine I'm a patient with heart failure. What's the really big change that I'm going to see from this app? It prevents people having to come into a hospital environment, uh, which around here, it's really rural. So there's lots of travelling. Um, for Mr Dobson, it's about an hour's drive to come through to see me in clinic um, but with Covid it's one less face-to-face -face and risk exposure. The app won't be suitable for all heart patients but it could make life easier for many even those who admit to being a little sceptical at first. Don't be afraid of it. It's there to be used for our benefit and uh, you go and try it there's nothing to lose, but far more to gain. Evan Dobson ending that report. Now, over the next few weeks, we'll be bringing you interviews with some of the major figures in Welsh politics, giving us an insight into their backgrounds, their inspirations and the work they do. Tonight, we'll hear from the new climate change minister, Julie James. She's been reflecting on how personal tragedy changed the course of her life and why she's not actually enjoying her new role just yet. She's been speaking to our political editor, Felicity Evans, and our correspondent, James Williams, on the BBC's Walescast podcast. And she started by talking about her globetrotting childhood. My father had uh, really itchy feet. Right. Um, and never really settled to any one occupation. So about every 18 months, 20 months, we would be up and off again. Um, but we always came back to Wales in between. And your brother... <laughs> So my, I don't know if you stood out, but I'm yeah, your so, so clearly from the expression on your face, it's like, oh, not you know this what question this, You again. know what's coming, you know what's coming. I can't your get him to do a gig, <laughs> and I can't, I can't get him to do you an interview. Your brother's Aphex Twin. He is. Uh, and for those who don't know, uh, essentially he's electronic... Uh, techno Quite music. heavy. <laughs> music. Yes, the Mozart of techno, I've heard him describe. Yeah, he's... Very good. Would he agree with that? He would. <laughs> <laughs> we would. We're all very proud of him. In the days when I was doing A-levels, um, clever girls did, you were a lawyer or a doctor. Nobody ever offered me string theory or <laughs> astrophysicist. So, um, so I applied to do law in university. And how did the career evolve then? Because you, you ended up um, as the deputy chief executive of Swansea Council, didn't you? Yeah, so I, I um, did my bar finals and, um, it's a bit of, sorry, this is a bit sad, this bit of the story. And I married my, um, my long-term partner and we had a baby and then he was killed in a car crash when she was 11 months old. Um, and, you know, your life just changes. It's a sliding door moment, isn't it? So I was at the bar. Um, I got a job with uh, the London Borough of Camden because um, I needed a more settled existence and I got into local government as a result, which wasn't my original plan. And did that that awful event, obviously it must have taken such a long time to come to terms with, but in, in terms of the... You never come to terms no, with that. No, I'm sure. Never. So it's, uh, Katie's 35 now, so he, uh, Steve was killed 33 years ago. And um, what you do is you learn to live with it. You don't recover you just learn to live with it and I was very lucky and I met my exceptionally sainted uh, husband David and he rescued me really he rescued us climate change housing transport 
It's a big job. It's a huge job. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Uh, Are you getting to grips with it? I'm not enjoying it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will enjoy it. We've got twice as much to do in the next 10 years did, yeah. as we did in the last 30. You know, that's easy to say, and my goodness, it's hard to do. What we have to do is make it easy to do the right thing. So if it's hard to do the right thing and easy to do the wrong thing, then, you know, on a bad day, people will do the wrong thing. The more we can put in place to make it easy to do the right thing, the better. Julie James there, and if you want to hear more of the interview, you can download Walescast on BBC Sounds and most other podcast platforms. Well, to the Olympics next, and Welsh runner Jake Hayward has qualified for the final of the men's 1500 race in Tokyo. The 22-year-old from Cardiff finished sixth in his semi-final, but he makes it to the medal race as a fastest qualifier with an impressive personal best and new Welsh record time of just under three minutes and 33 seconds. That's where I want to be. I want to be on the, the world stage and fighting in the final, so I'm just really happy that... I managed to just about hang on to it. <laughs> you know, how do you rate yourself going into this now? How are you taking your chances with this? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, all you need is a lane. You've got a chance if you stand on that start line, and obviously the objective was to get to the final. So, yeah, now we've ticked that box, all three of us. And, yeah, we got three bits in the final, so it's awesome. Well, best of luck to Jake, that final on Saturday. Football and the new Swansea City boss, Russell Martin, said he felt a connection with the club straight away after he was identified as a top target. Martin recently signed a three-year contract with the Swans after leaving League One side MK Dons. Swansea kick off their championship season against Blackburn on Saturday. There was real alignment there and I felt connection to that straight away. And I spoke to a lot of people in the game about um, the club, people who have worked here, people who have played here. Um, about how special the place is, um, especially when you, you can get it rocking and rolling and, and uh, implement something that everyone really enjoys. Now, some of Wales' biggest races will go ahead later this year. The Newport Wales Marathon and 10K, as well as the Cardiff Bay Run, will make their return for the first time since the start of the pandemic. The events will take place in September and October, with organisers saying they'll be delivered safely following the guidelines. George Zielinski reports. It's a sight we haven't seen in months, but soon events like these will be up and running again. It's been confirmed the Newport Wales Marathon and 10K, postponed due to the pandemic, have been rescheduled for the 24th of October. Music to the ears of the more than 6,000 runners who attend annually from across the world. Organisers say it's now possible to safely deliver the events this autumn with additional measures in place. We are encouraging all runners to uh, wear face coverings uh, in the pens and there's a, a huge team that's been put in place around the hygiene and cleansing of the event making sure that uh, any any touch points are, are minimized and that we're just doing everything we possibly can to to make people feel comfortable and confident that you know the the experience of coming back for major events like this is is a successful one those measures will also apply to the Cardiff Bay Run, taking place on the 26th of September for the first time since 2019. This year, though, won't see the return of the Cardiff Half Marathon. That's been postponed until the end of March next year. The decision taken last month following discussions with the Welsh Government and Cardiff Council and uncertainty over social distancing rules. The Cardiff Half Marathon has become one of the leading half marathons in, in Europe. Um, and at 27,500 with 100,000 spectators, it was, it was always going to be a challenge in, in, in this year. So we've, we've found a new date for that in, in the spring, in March. So all of those runners that have been waiting patiently for quite some time to get back um, to the city centre in Cardiff will have now uh, you know, a date to aim at. Later this month, the Snowdonia Half Marathon is due to take place with the Swansea Half Marathon already scheduled for November as the events sector in Wales slowly gets back on its feet. George Zielinski reporting there, but I'm not sure uh, you'd actually want to go out running in the weather we have ahead. Um, some warnings in place, Derek. Yes, that's right, Lucy. There are Met Office yellow warnings in force for thunderstorms. Uh, one warning covers uh, northern counties tomorrow and then for mid and north Wales on Saturday. Could be uh, some travel disruption and flooding in a few places as well. So we have seen a big change in our weather today thanks to a low pressure, dark clouds over Penmon, 
on Anglesey today. Some heavy rain there this afternoon. Slightly brighter skies in Haverford West, but the air unstable with some towering clouds and heavy showers. And this evening, further outbreaks of rain heavy in places. That will clear. There will be some drier weather overnight, but notice these are... Uh, Green blobs, they're heavy showers. You may hear a rumble of thunder. It is going to be a mild night, remaining quite breezy too, especially in coastal areas. So the reason for the change in the weather is all down to a dip in the jet stream, the UK in the cool air, with low pressure over the UK tomorrow. That means more rain, heavy showers and stronger winds as well. And a Met Office yellow warning, as I mentioned, for thunderstorms. That covers northern counties tomorrow. So it is going to be a breezy day tomorrow, windy on some exposed coasts, such as the Thleen Peninsula. Further showers as well, some of these heavy and thundery. In the south, though, it should be drier and brighter with fewer showers and some sunshine. And the temperatures tomorrow are no great shakes around 17 to 20 Celsius at the highest. Now, looking ahead to Saturday, low pressure remains in charge, maintaining the unsettled conditions. So on Saturday, it's going to be another breezy day with showers or longer spells of rain, some heavy downpours with a warning of thunderstorms for mid and north Wales. Uh, could be flooding in a few places. Should improve, though, in Pembrokeshire on Saturday afternoon, brightening up with some sunshine, but temperatures uh, disappointing for August, only about 16 to 18 Celsius. And then on Sunday, there's more showers to come, still quite breezy. Some of the showers heavy, but hopefully some drier, brighter spells and sunny intervals developing during the afternoon. And temperatures, again, uh, nothing to write home about, 17 to 19 Celsius with a brisk west to southwesterly wind. So not the best of weather if you're on holiday over the next uh, few days. Here's the summary for the weekend. More rain, heavy showers and a risk of thunderstorms, but some drier, brighter spells mixed in as well. Signs of uh, some improving weather next week, but not completely dry, Lucy. OK, Derek, thanks very much. A reminder of our main stories tonight. 39-year-old John Cole has appeared in court charged with the murder of his stepson, Logan Mwangi. Cole, Logan's mother and a 13-year-old boy were also charged with perverting the course of justice. And an announcement is due which could move Wales to alert level zero, which means no legal coronavirus restrictions on the number of people who can meet and all businesses can reopen. Face coverings are expected to remain in some settings. And that's Wales Today. We're back with more after the BBC News at 10, including any updates on the easing of those coronavirus restrictions. For now, though, from all of us on the programme, thanks so much for your company and have a really good evening. Bye-bye.